Hi friends, today we have Srinath, who is one of our course enrolled students for the AI course. Thank you, Srinath, for taking the time to discuss your learning journey and interview experiences with us. Thank you very much. Yeah, hi Srikanth. Yeah, it's pleasure uh, meeting you. And uh, I feel it's my honor and uh, responsibility uh, to share my feedback and uh, learning. I'm happy that you're sharing your journey <laughs> because I'm sure it will help a lot of other students with similar experiences like yours on planning their transition itself, right? So let me give an introduction of where you're coming yeah. from. So uh, uh, Srinath is joining this American retail giant called Loves. Uh, I think it's pronounced as Loves or something like that. I don't know the exact American pronunciation, but I've seen this store in the US. It's basically a home improvement retail store, one of the largest in the US. And uh, Srinath is joining as a senior data scientist at Loves, uh, which is an American retail giant. And he has about 14 years of IT experience across a wide spectrum of companies. And most recently, he has been with Wipro for about six years, almost like six years as a tech lead. And Srinath uh, hearty congratulations for making the successful transition to a senior data scientist role, especially given your wide breadth of experiences at a lot of companies. So let's get into the first, uh, the, the crux of it. As somebody with about 14 years of experience, especially when you're interviewing for a senior data scientist role uh, at a very, very good product-based company, an American retail giant, what were your interview experiences like? Can you go into the details of it? Because so that that helps other students who have this 10 plus years of work experience know what to expect in an interview when they're coming from this wide experience. Yeah, sure, Srikan. Uh, to start about my about myself, uh, I have, as you said, I have 13, 14 years of experience. Initially, I have started my career in a data warehousing. I have played ETL role and reporting developer role. Then uh, I have spent around five years there. Then I wanted to have a switch. I wanted to learn something. At that time, uh, big data was in hype and uh, I was interested. I was writing some papers and somehow I got a chance to it and I entered big data. Then uh, I have spent around five years there in big data. Then many people started jumping into big data as it is a Java framework. You also know all Java people, those who got stuck there, uh, from years onwards, they wanted good hike and they jumped into big data. And I felt too much of crowd in big data. I want to do something new, uh, which is interesting. Then uh, I have seen uh, machine learning. I felt uh, this is quite interesting and a challenging thing also. And I thought of entering it. Then somehow <clears throat> I was struggling to study where to start, all those things. I have seen some Siraj Rawal videos. He was telling this, that I was confused. I have started, I spent around three to four months, but I did not go anywhere. At that point of time, so my brother uh, has uh, recommended me this course. Hey, this is a nice course. So just why don't you look into it? Then when I went through the course, uh, I got really shocked. Uh, whatever I was looking, everything was in place. Uh, it was uh, learner's stop for me, like uh, shopper stop for clothes. I, I, I thought it is a learner stop for me, applied AI. Then uh, I started through it. Then uh, I got uh, one complete knowledge of the machine learning, deep learning and everything. Uh, with that, uh, I could take a move. Considering my experience, uh, uh, interviewers were asking uh, about uh, use cases and uh, how you have dealt the team, uh, whether you are leading a team of a data scientist or not, and uh, uh, deployment stuff, uh, productionalizing the stuff, everything they were looking. And for some interviews, uh, some companies were expecting lead role because of my experience. Uh, they had already junior data scientist or senior data scientist, and they wanted me to take up the lead role to guide them. Uh, because of my exposure, uh, limited exposure to machine learning, a uh, few companies rejected me, though I, ha I have cleared initial one or two rounds, but uh, they have rejected me. Uh, then a uh, few companies uh, which are looking for uh, senior data scientist roles, uh, like uh, here, Lewis and few other, I have got multiple offers also. Uh, those companies offered me considering a two to three plus years of experience and uh, my experience into IT was also an advantage to them leading a team and uh, uh, deployment of use cases and uh, big data and all exposure. Uh, companies don't need completely five to 10 years of experience on ML also because uh, they have many aspects in the project. Uh, Multiple teams will be there. We have to do coordination and use case architecture discussions. Multiple things will be there. They evaluate all the things. Uh, we should know. I don't think we need to get scared. Uh, I have 14 plus years of experience, 10 plus. I should, uh, how many years I have to keep into ML, all those things. 
this is I what believe, I learned. I believe even when you were working at Wipro as a tech lead, lot of learnings that you've had from the course, you try to apply that as part of your current role, right? That, that's that's always very mm, helpful yes. because when you're learning machine learning, you start applying it to the projects and to the modules that your team is building so that you can showcase it as experience right. at the end of the day, right? Yeah, right. In a project also, when I was working into big data, uh, which was a banking client, uh, we were dealing with uh, internet banking movement of data from uh, IBM system to Hadoop system. Uh, then uh, I got some idea, why can't we do customer profiling uh, like that? Uh, then we started applying and then uh, I checked with my manager. Then he told already there is a team, why don't you coordinate? In that way, I got a chance. Then uh, I felt interesting thing and some uh, in that way, my journey started towards ML. Very good. Along very with good. It's very important. Uh, learning. Cool, cool. So it's very important mm -hmm. to take whatever you're learning in the course, especially if you're an experienced professional with five years plus or 10 years plus experience and incorporate that into your current project because you have the ability to do it, right? Most important. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very, yes. So uh, as part of the interviews themselves, did you have uh, any machine learning specific interviews? Mm, yes. Uh, initially, they took, uh, everyone is uh, taking some uh, Python uh, coding uh, <coughs> interviews. Uh, they will, uh, we need to share the, our desktop and we have to do coding in a Jupyter notebook or notepad. Uh, then uh, they ask uh, some machine learning stuff also, few companies. Uh, they will give Kaggle data set and uh, uh, they, they are asking to code and uh, explain uh, what you have done with that use case. In that way, few companies have asked it. Few companies took a direct uh, interviews. Uh, it how depends complex on the were these, how complex were these tasks, whether it was a Python programming task or a solving a real world problem with data sets on Kaggle or direct interviews as compared to what you have encountered at Applied AI course. Were they of the similar range or easier or harder? Yeah, if we do <coughs> our course properly, uh, as you have said in the initial videos, uh, uh, we have to jot down the points, we have to <coughs> iterate uh, <coughs> every week and we have to do the assignments, whatever the <coughs> code walkthrough you will give. If you do all those things, uh, everything will be easy and that is what the industry itself is doing. Okay. If you so do you feel... <coughs> it uh, genuinely, Sorry, you didn't feel yeah, it will help us. questions that were asked in the interviews or the tasks that they gave you to be of even hard level, they are simpler than what we have done in the course. Yeah, it, uh, they are at par with uh, what you have taught. Very good. Uh, Very good. No one has asked beyond uh, the course. Very I strongly good. feel it. So that, that's a good feedback for us because if there is something that we are missing, we can keep adding it to the course. Uh, one very important question for you would be, how did you balance? Because with 14 years of experience, we both are the same BTEC batch. So I understand that your family, probably kids, a lot of work yeah. life <laughs> stuff. How did you balance all of it and also continue to learn uh, machine learning over a period of one year and successfully apply it to your current role and also successfully transition? So can you tell us how you went through the course successfully over the last year or so? Yeah, uh, to say frankly, uh, it is really tough, uh, tough only for us. And I have close to five years kid. Uh, I have to balance time with us. Every time she, my daughter comes to me, Papa, we have to play. And uh, uh, I will have a lot of challenges at work also because uh, I'm in, I'm, as I'm a lead, I have to take some escalations also. My deliveries will be there. Uh, it's uh, quite tough only, but uh, if you have dedication, if you have zeal uh, to study, <clears throat> nothing compromises. We can uh, study. The only thing is sometimes we will get demotivated. Oh, yeah, this much we have to study uh, like that. Uh, many times I got demotivated, uh, but uh, by the time I get demotivated, uh, your, video, your mail will come. A success story of someone success story of someone. When I see it, it will get uh, more, it gets uh, so much of motivation for me. And uh, we have to do self-motivation every time. ML is not a simple stuff. Uh, we have to spend uh, some good time with it. Then, uh, then only we can achieve it. So like other courses, right. it is not just a three months. You're very right that yeah. the reason we do some of these success stories is to keep the motivation levels of students because we yeah. understand that you are spending almost a year consistently putting in 10 to 15 hours a week. There will be the up and down of roller coaster of emotions, motivation, yes. <laughs> all of that happens. That's why we are doing some of these. And I'm happy that you're participating in this because your interview will help 100 other students or probably 1,000 other students to be disciplined mm, yeah. and to get re-motivated. 
Cool, cool. Uh, so one other question about your preparation strategy, given your hectic work, life, kids, all of that stuff, how were you spending time on the course consistently, even through the emotional roller coaster? Like, were you trying to spend two hours in the morning or mostly time in the weekends? How did you do that? Yeah, mostly at least one and a half hour to two hours I used to spend uh, for ML. Uh, in the weekends, uh, I used to spend a bit, uh, bit more time, more close to three to four hours. Uh, as I have a daughter, I could not spend a daytime. I used to wake up sometimes at four o'clock and spend more time. Otherwise, I used to spend late nights uh, wow. because daytime I have to spend for my family and my organization. True, true. Very true. Very true. Um, mm, very yeah. interesting. Again, since you already come from that software engineering background, you're also a big data tech lead. So it makes logical sense for you because you would understand a lot of the coding pieces easily. And you also know the applications because you have all these experience. So probably the most important stuff for you to learn was the mathematics and the internal workings of machine learning. So it was yeah. easier and you could just get away with one hour, two hours a day. So that's good. That's good. Uh, another question that I have for you is, but, uh, it... please go ahead. Yeah, I I took more so much time to complete the content. I took almost eight months to uh, ten months, I think. That's perfectly um, all right. But I many mean, people were telling three to six months. Yeah. No, no. So people, people should not get demoted. Uh, three to six yeah, months. Yeah, it depends on individual. True. <laughs> uh, people yeah. who were completing it in three to six months were mostly B Tech students or people who had a career, especially mm -hmm. three months. We have seen working professionals who complete in mm. six months, but three months is not fully realistic unless they're spending eight hours a day, which most working professionals of your mm. experience can't spend, right? Like right, yeah. we know that people who spend like 15 hours a week can complete it in six to 10 months, six to nine months comfortably. Mm. You're right. So I have one other question for you, which is what suggestions would you give for people with 10 plus years or probably 12 plus years of experience like you on how, should, how they should learn, and most importantly, how they should position themselves and plan for the successful transition to data science. Uh, basic understanding of ML and uh, <clears throat> hands-on, and a good understanding of all the advanced concepts uh, will be sufficient is what I feel for uh, high, highly experienced people. Got it, got it. Uh, thank you, Srinath. Thank you for taking the time and sharing both your interview experiences and your learning journey itself because I'm sure it will motivate a lot of our students, both within the course and outside the course, who have this 14, 15 years work experience. Thank you very much.